How you going? Lincoln here from Landfish TV. It's been a bit quiet in fishing, so I thought I would show you at Gem Pier. It's one of my local bay spots, and you've probably seen me catch quite a few fish here. So if you've been watching my videos, you probably recognize this lower platform. If you haven't, this video is perfect for you because I'm going to tell you how to fish it. You've got a nice jetty that comes along, nothing to trip on, no hazards, and you just come down that little ramp there. And what I generally start doing is, you see these little tie-off points? I'll start at that first one up there, and I'll stand like that. And all I'm doing is I'll cast one, two, three, four, five, just bottom bouncing, and then I might even chuck one along the side of the jetty and just slow roll it maybe 30 centimeters down just in case there's something just under this pier. And I'll probably do another one that way just to make sure that if there's something there, we're gonna catch it because it's all about expanding where you're fishing and your chances to be able to hunt down these fish and catch them. I've caught brim, pinkies and flathead down here on this platform. For, from what I can gather, from what I can feel with the rod, it's a nice descending sort of bottom along here and then it goes to a bit of a drop off along there. Great thing about down here is you can actually get up under these jetties and flick little casts in there and just either slow roll them along the side of the crossbars, which generally they would be underwater at high tide, or you can even just vertical jig those poles. So slowly letting it sink and vertical jig up. Now, if you're right down the end of this lower platform, so right next to the Castle Main, be careful if you cast this way, because there is a cross cable, sun's a bit in the way, but there is a little red sign just there. So if you cast along here too far, you're just gonna get snagged on that and you're gonna lose lures. So have a look where that red sign is and cast just before it, let it sink down because there's actually some fish that do hang out under and around that cable just waiting for a feed. So I have caught a fair few fish just by flicking the lure along there and bottom bouncing it along the hull because they're just sitting there waiting for a feed. So it's a good little place to catch those ambush little flatties and brim. So if you are gonna do the vertical jigging along here, I'd suggest coming at the peak of high tide just so you've got the most water that you can come up here and use. Because you can see there that there's not much water here and there's not much point doing it unless there is a fair bit more water here. And generally the fish come and feed on the pylons and the poles at high tide anyway, so it's a good time to do it. So even on this little part of the jetty, you've got a hell of a lot of things you can do. So if you're doing all that while you're moving around the jetty, you've got more chance of catching something. And then there's the little pier off the main pier. So down here I've caught salmon, flathead, and I've caught pinkies and I've played with a few brim as well. So you can really see that the species do get around and move around the piers and the different parts of it. The main difference to the rest of the pier is you can actually cast along the boat hulls here. So you can cast along and either slow roll your lure along them near the hulls or you can bottom bounce down there so you're letting them go down and then bouncing it along the bottom there and generally you do pick a few up if they're here what i'd do is i'd generally come to the end of it here and i'd do my fan out of bottom bouncing like this coming out and working my way around and then i might do a couple of vertical jigs up along the pylons here and then i would move on to actually casting along the hulls and working them. If you're fishing for brim, it's really close to structure, so you wanna go as close as you can to all this stuff, and you'd be using those smaller lures, so the, the two inch, the two and a halves, and the, either single tail or double tail, or even little little hard bodies or metal vibes, they, they work quite well as well, but there's a bit more out there in the way you can use them around this sort of stuff.
all the way around the pier you've got these big tie off points and I use them as a reference to make sure I fish the entirety of the pier and cover all the area. So when I stop and fan out my casts I'm going to the first one of these and fishing where I can before moving halfway between them fanning out the cast and doing exactly the same thing and then moving on to the next big tie-off point and that just makes it easy to cover all the ground when you are trying to search out those fish and see where they are because sometimes if you stay in the same spot you've got no hope at all so you've really got to move around when you're land based on a pier and gem pier is no different than any other pier you have to go around and try and find where the fish are keep in mind that when you are walking along the pier every little pylon so every pylon that's going down into the water is an opportunity so on a high tide especially you can do that vertical jigging at every single one of the pylons so if you're going around and going to one of these big tie off points fanning out your cast for flatties or whatever's out there then you can go and vertical jig your way to the next halfway point where you're going to start fanning out your cast again and that really covers all the fish species that you would get around here because you're covering everything that's eating on the poles and everything that's eating out there so it's a really good way to make sure when you're working the whole way you're increasing your chances so on the right hand side of the pier there is a slow drop off and there's a couple of weed beds out there that pop up every now and then but there's no real big deep holes like there is on the other side over there which is almost near three meters so on this side it's slow and slanted a couple of little drop offs that go down and the flathead do hang out there and i've caught a lot of flatties on this side of the pier and generally i might even skip this first part and go straight to about halfway down the pier because I find that there's a nice little drop off it's not not too much change not too much difference but there's a nice little drop off out here and it's about maybe six meters out and it goes it goes along the edge here of the pier so it's just a really good area where flatties would be sitting there and waiting for a feed Popping back over to the side of the castle main, don't forget to work this side. And you're not fanning out your cast like you are on the other side, because obviously there's a ship there. So what you're doing is you're actually going along and you're casting in towards the edge of the boat, letting it sink straight down and then slowly popping it along the ground. And you can do that along the sides here as well. And you can do that vertical jigging. So if you're not fishing little areas like that, you're really missing out on some fish that could be there because I've caught a heck of a lot of fish even just along here on this particular pier so little spots like that you really have to get in there and make sure you're covering all the ground so you don't miss out on anything so I'd work my way all the way up the pier all the way to the end and continue fanning out my casts and this little corner here on the end is one of my little favorite spots there's a bit of a drop off and a bump out here and the fish love it so you might be wondering what lures work down here. So to be honest, most soft plastics between two inch and four inch will work down here. If you are going to four inch, you want something with a smaller profile. So something like the, the four inch worms or the slim swims or things like that. So something that size works well on the bigger flathead and you might even get a mull away. But generally when I come down here, if I'm not using that four inch worm, I'll be using either one of these two and a half inch paddle grubs or a two and a half inch curly. Just because the smaller in profile you go, the more things eat it. It's always good to have a range of jig heads just so you can suit the conditions. Today it's quite windy so I've had to upgrade even to a one fourth to get out there and be able to have any chance of feeling this lure. So if it's not windy and there's no current, drop down to a one eighth or even a one sixteenth have done well in down here. But if it is windier, you do need that extra weight to get out there I think, otherwise you just can't feel the lure. If I was specifically targeting pinkies and brim, I would come here on the upcoming tide about two hours beforehand and work all these pylons and do the vertical jigging and work all the boat hulls. If I'm going for flathead, which you can really catch at any time, I will come down here first two hours of the outgoing and just fish all the areas. If I don't have too much time or I've just got time on my hands and I want to go fishing, then I don't really care what the tide is and I just go. 
And if you're new to fishing, I'd just say, if you've got the time, head out there, give it a go. The more time you put in, the more effort you put in, the more fish you will catch. Well, I hope those of you that haven't been down to Gem Pier have enjoyed this video, and I hope those of you that have been down here at least got something out of it. So that's just a little bit about how I fish this pier, and look around really. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, comment below, and go and subscribe. See you next time. They aren't there all the time, but most fish species do frequent and get around. Ah, there's a school of salmon out there. Right out there. Big school of salmon. Bugger. Missed out on yesterday because I went out in the kayak and today I missed out on it again. Bugger.